how is everybody doing today welcome back to another video and today what i have for everyone is my software walkthrough of the software on the Uliphone power armor 16 pro so i've been using this device for a few days now and i finally have everything set up just the way I want it. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive into all of the software on the device. Let's start off with the basics and go all the way through the deepest customizations. All right. So starting off with the basics, this is running Android 12. Let me verify for y'all. So if we jump into the settings here and we scroll down and we go to about phone. You can see we are running Android 12. So if I hit this, you can see our security patch level. You can see for the system and for the Play Store. And if I double tap here, you can see we got our Android 12 Easter egg. All right. Okay. And then even further still, if you wanted to verify your security patches for the Play Store, and the system you can see that also from security so let me show you this so if we go back and we scroll up to security okay you can also see that same information from here okay so you can see your security patch level for the system itself and the security patch for the play store also inside of security this is where you get access to your app lock and your biometrics so we do have face unlock as well as a built-in fingerprint scanner built into the power button you set that up from here and we also have app lock and smart lock as well okay you will set that all up from here okay just wanted to verify that for everyone okay now as I showed y'all this is running Android 12 so you can see if I swipe down on my notification shade it's ha it has the new Android 12 redesign and if I swipe down again you can see we have the new Android 12 quick toggles all right so if I swipe through y'all can see all the new quick toggles all right and this is fully customizable so you see this edit pencil in the bottom left hand corner I tap that we can edit all of our quick toggles so you can set this up exactly the way you would like and then you hit save or you back out of it to get to that if you hit the hamburger menu in the top right you can reset the quick toggles back to the factory defaults okay so let's back out of this Okay, so those are your quick toggles and you can see also from our quick toggle page in the middle on the bottom we got a shortcut to our power menu so you can restart your device you can power off your device all from the software or by long pressing the power button if you would like then we also got a quick shortcut to our settings okay all from the quick toggles right moving on here you can see this is a very stock experience. It's only slightly skinned. So a swipe down will bring up our notification shade. Another swipe down will bring up our quick toggles. A swipe up will take us into our app drawer. And let me slowly swipe through this so y'all can see everything that I've installed. Because this way you can compare it to what you saw in the unboxing and first impressions video. So let me swipe through this slowly. And I do have all of this set up. Okay. Okay. And if you don't believe me, let's bring up Instagram just for verification. So it's going to launch into my Instagram. All right. Okay. Now my, Insta my Instagram is very grown up, so we're not going to stand that long. Also, if you don't believe me, let me jump into my Facebook. Okay, see what we're working with here. Y'all can see we're on my Facebook. Asking me if I want to share one of my older memories. I do not. I'll probably just dismiss that. But you can see I have all of my important applications 
signed in. Okay, my light applications, my headphone applications, everything's all set up. And I actually have my Google Buds connected right now. So if I jump into the Google Buds application, y'all can see that I have my Google Buds connected right now. Okay, just verifying that I am indeed signed into everything. Only thing I haven't done is activated data on this device yet. Still waiting to get my other device unlocked, as I said in the unboxing and first impressions video from a few days ago. All right, but let's keep going through the software. So if you want to customize the software, like your um, home screen settings, like your wallpapers, like um, your app drawer layout, all that good stuff, you do that by a long press. So if you long press, and if we swipe over, you can see you can add your widgets right here. And you got all Android 12 full access widgets. You do it again. We got our effects. So we got our different styles of effects. Okay. You go over, we have themes. There are built in themes built into the device by default. Okay. And you can see all I did was customize the one that came on by default, but we have a variety of different themes here, which will also change the wallpapers. Okay. And then if we go over, you can see all your wallpapers. Now I installed the Google wallpaper picker cause I just like to use uh, solid colors. I like to optimize my devices for usage, I'm very utilitarian in that way. But here's all your wallpapers that come on by default. Some pretty good stuff here. Okay. And then lastly, if we swipe all the way over, you can get to your home screen settings. And this is how you set up your home screen, your app drawer layout, so you can see notification dots, adding new applications when installed to the home screen, your home screen layout, so you can do four by four, all the way up to five by five, okay? You can change custom icons for different applications, okay? You can also do custom names for different applications, okay? And you can control your application sizes. So if you need it bigger, you need it smaller. Let's make it smaller here. Just so we could fit more on the screen. Tap OK and then it configures it for you. Let's get back to that. Okay. Then we got our desktop settings. Okay. So whether you want all the applications on the screen or you want an app screen with a home draw, all that good stuff here and how it's laid out. Okay. And it gives you nice detailed uh, information as to what it's doing. So you can see I have mine set up to have home screen with app drawer, but I can also do all my applications on the screen like an Apple device if I would like. Okay. Then we have our folder layouts, easy launcher, self-explanatory. Um, how quickly our applications open and that app, that animation. I have mine set to quick. Okay. We got our application names and the length. So you can shorten it or leave it its original length. Okay. I have mine clicked so it does it in one line. And we can lock our layout so it doesn't change your home screen layout. If you do accidental presses, everything will stay how you have it set up originally. We got our app dock. We can also let, lock that. Okay. So this way you won't move applications from this bottom row if you lock the app dock here. Okay. And then you can see if I swipe left, we do have access to the Google feed. So the Google feed is here. Now I will say this, with everything loaded up and all of my applications signed in, I am noticing a lot of sluggishness when there's a lot of stuff on the screens. 
so I'm not happy about that. But after a while, it does kind of settle down. But there is a noticeable amount of sluggishness. Okay, so I'm not a big fan of that. But there's our Google feed to the far left. And then y'all can see, let me show you this. If I hit my recent apps, you can see with all of my applications going, you can see I don't really have a lot of available RAM. So four gigs of RAM, depending on the type of user you are, four gigs of RAM might not be enough. And you can see for me, four gigs of RAM is not enough with everything I have loaded up. Okay, but still. So we went over our home screen settings. We went over how you can do those customizations. Let's take a deeper dive into the settings now. Load it up. So all of this is self-explanatory. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Android Auto, SIM, our data network. Now your SIM and your data network, you'll gain access to this when you actually put a SIM card into it. This way you can configure your APNs. But the rest of this is self-explanatory. So mobile hotspots, whether it be uh, Bluetooth or data connections. Okay. Then we have more connections and networks. So you can see we got VPNs and we have private DNS. Okay. Going on down, you can see our display. So right now I have it set to a dark mode. I like dark mode. I have my auto brightness turned off. You can see auto mode turned off. Adaptive brightness turned off. Okay. My night mode turned that off because I just have it set to dark mode here. And this is also where you can change your wallpapers again and change your home screen. It will take us back to that same spot I showed y'all before. Okay. And then we have different charging animations in here. Show you these. I just leave mine on default. Let's get out of that. And we do have a multicolored notification LED. Okay. And you can configure that in here. All right. So whether you want it to blink, whether you want it to do nothing, or whether you want it to breathe, got mine set to blinking. Okay. Let's get out of that. Screen rotate font sizes, display sizes, screen saver, all of this stuff is self-explanatory. Screen color. So if you want to change the screen temperature, we got standard, we got vivid, and we got cool color. And it does change the temperature ever so slightly. So there's cool color, here's vivid, and here's standard. I just leave it on standard. I want the closest to natural coloring as possible. So I got it set to standard. Then we got lock screen notifications and how that shows up. Okay, getting a lot of notifications here today. Then if we go down underneath display, we got our nav bar. So we can hide the nav bar. We can rearrange the nav bar. We can turn on full gestures. So you can see we could turn the full gestures on here and it gives you a demonstration of it with the written uh, description and a nice visual representation of it. Now I like the uh, virtual keys. So that's why I have that turned on. And I like the stock, the stock layout for the virtual keys. That's why I have it set like that. But you can do that too. Okay. Coming out of that, you can see now the rest of this is self-explanatory sounds, applications, notifications, privacy. We went over security. You can see your custom key here. So you can configure your custom key to do a single press, a double press, and a long press. So if we do single press, Here's your option. So start a voice recording, open the flashlight, and the built-in flashlight on this is really strong and nice. Okay. You can do it to take a screenshot, launch the underwater camera in the underwater mode, because this is waterproof. 
So if you want to launch the underwater camera and take pictures on the water, you can do that as well. I'm not doing that though. You, they do have a custom um, SOS mode, and I'm not sure what that last mode is. The open Zillow mode. I'm not sure what that is. But you can also configure the keys to open any application on the device. So you can see it here. Any application. Okay. All right. Now, just just because I don't like getting accidental presses for right now, I have it turned off. But when I need to do certain things and I want to do it with a one key press, then I come in here and do this. Now, the thing that I have it set up to do mostly is take screenshots with one key press. Now, you can still take a screenshot the regular way by pressing and holding the volume down and the power. But being able to take a screenshot with one key press, that's really nice. So that's typically what I have the custom key set to. But that's how you configure the custom key and what it does. But let's turn it off for now so we don't get any accidental presses. Okay. Moving on down, we got Intelligent Assistant. All right. And this is where you can set up certain fingerprint functions. Okay. So what happens when you do certain things on the fingerprint? Okay. Certain gestures and things. This is also where we have our dual application mode or our dual app mode or what they like to call as clone app. So you can sign into multiple accounts on different apps. So if you have two WhatsApps, two Facebooks, so on and so forth, any supported app, once it's installed, it will populate. So you can see I do have Facebook installed on here. So Facebook is populated. So if I wanted to sign in to two different Facebooks, I just have to toggle that off. But that's your dual app or clone app or dual messenger app. Okay. That's it. It's under app clone. We do have the three finger screenshot gesture. We got the three fingers uh, split screen gesture. Okay. We got the quick double press of the power button to launch the cameras. Y'all can see I have that turned on. We got a high sensitivity glove mode. So if you're in construction and you use this for work gloves, you might want to use that feature. We got double tap to wake. We got raise to wake. These go well with the face unlock in my opinion. We have a nice one handed mode or ball mode as I like to call it. Okay, and again, they give you nice visual representations with nice detailed descriptions so you know exactly what everything does. So if you want to try something out, determine if it's for you and use it, or you want to try some, something out and you don't like it and disable it, you can do that here. Okay. Then we got sidebar applications. So similar to what you have on note devices. Okay. And then we got our accessibility settings. So we got our full accessibility settings here. Okay. And that's intelligent assist. Let's get out of that. Now let's get into smart touch. And we have more gestures and configurations here. All right. And y'all can see the different modes. I have mine set to gesture mode with the software keys, but you can configure it to do different gestures when you swipe or press different buttons. Okay. You do that here. And then moving on down, we got our battery settings. Okay. Now I did try to use it with the battery restrictor turned on, but it got way too sluggish and it was killing a lot of my important apps in the background. So I just went ahead and turned that all off. Uh, app optimization, RAM boost, Dura speed, all of that, turned that all off. I don't want to kill anything unless I kill it. Now it will still kill apps once the memory gets full, but the performance is a little bit better with all of those optimizations turned off. And you can see, um, it's, been, oh, it's been about a day and a half almost. How long has it been? 
since I charged it last. Let me see. Yeah, it's been about 13 hours since my last charge. Let's look at some battery stats. Now, for some strange reason, even though I loaded up AccuBattery, it couldn't do a full battery calibration. So it started out showing my screen on time, but then the screen on time detection just disabled. Okay, so for my last few charge cycles, it's not registering my screen on time. Okay, and y'all can see so far, I've charged the device one, two times so far in about four days. Okay, so that's that. And you can see we got our battery percentage widget here, our toggle here. Now, AccuBattery has its own battery percentage so I, I usually turn that off when I install active battery on my Android devices let's move on location self-explanatory password and account self-explanatory uh, system pretty much self-explanatory here so your system updates are in here your language and inputs are in here your time zones are in here if you want if you want to run different backups that's in here as well. Get out of that. I don't really need to see my email or my backup information, so I might gray that out. All right, you can do your factory resets from here. You can set up multiple users from here, so on and so forth inside a system, okay? Then our digital well-being, self-explanatory, about device, already went through that, but that's also where you can get into the storage on your device, and you can see with everything set up, I'm, I have about 40 gigs free. Now, I have not installed the micro SD card yet. I've just been taking a bunch of pictures using the device how I normally would, just without a uh, SIM card installed. So you can see just how many applications I've installed. I did take a little bit of video. I snapped some photos here, so you can see we are taking up a little bit of space. But we still got 40 gigs free out of the 64 gigs. Now, out of the box, we had 54 point something gigs uh, free out of the 64, if y'all remember from the unboxing. But that's how you would check your storage. Now, if you add an SD card, your SD card will pop up in there as well. Okay. So that's that. And then we got our Google stuff. Don't need to go over that. And then lastly, we got DuraSpeed. And again, I did leave DuraSpeed on for a few days, but then the performance really started to get super laggy and a little unresponsive because it was trying to aggressively kill apps in the background and learn my behavior. And it was, it was bad. So I just, I turned it off. I couldn't do it. So... This is DuraSpeed, this is what it does. Take your time to read this if you would like. And again, you could toggle it off and on. You could toggle it for different applications. So on and so forth. All right? But this essentially, guys and gals, goes over all of the software on your Ulephone Power Armor 16 Pro. All right? All right, let's jump back to the home screen now. So, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed this video. I hope you guys and gals found it helpful. If you did, you know what to do. All relevant information will be available down below in the video description. So if your interest is piqued, please check out the video description down below if you would like to know more, including if you're interested in picking up this device for a really great price. All the affiliated links will be available down below in the video description as well. And as the name implies, that is an affiliated link, meaning when y'all use those links, I do get a small percentage of kickback that I do put back into the channel, but that's at no additional cost to you guys and gals. So it's a win-win for everyone in my opinion. That being said, the video description will always be like a one-stop shop for you guys and gals and you should be good to go. All right, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed this video. I hope you guys and gals found it helpful and I will catch everyone in the next one. We are out of here. Have a good one everybody and stay safe.
Have a good one. We're out of here. Peace.